morning, my friend. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to Sunday. Last Sunday of February. This is the 27th of February, 2022. We're in Boulder, Colorado. We're at uh, 28th. This is 28th Street right here, our, our Highway 36 that comes out of Denver up to Estes Park. And right behind me is Pearl Street. To my left here, if you go down there a few more blocks, is the famous Pearl Street Mall, pedestrian mall. Uh, it's pretty famous. So uh, welcome, and right to my right here is Target. As you know, this is where I come every Sunday to uh, preach, to minister. I was looking on my calendar this morning and praying, and uh, praying over the corner and praying uh, for today. Uh, and I was looking at the hours that I've logged so far this month of February. Uh, in February has been a very cold month, uh, many, many sub-zero days. So therefore, I've probably canceled uh, several days too. I have. But lo and behold, even with all the canceled days and the sub-zero weather and a short month and the February being a rough month, I still have uh, 78 hours of flying the banner. Let me just double check, or is it pretty sure that's what it is? Sorry, I wrote it down on my calendar here. Uh, yep, 78 hours. 78 hours of preaching the gospel in the last 28 days. Uh, and that's with days off, plus sub-zero, snow, wind, all kinds of problems. And, uh, you know, every month, this is the news part of chapter one, every month goes by. And once that month has gone by, you're not gonna preach uh, like January, I can't preach in January. That January is already done. And uh, come tomorrow, tomorrow's Monday, I'm gonna be at uh, Table Mesa Road and uh, Foothills Parkway. And uh, that'll be the last day of February. And when that day is done, February is done. And I'll get over 80 hours of preaching the gospel. So my question to you, if you're a minister, how many hours have you put in preaching the gospel? Not counseling, not praying for people, not reading the Bible, not praying, but literally testifying to every man the gospel of Jesus Christ. How many hours? You know, because the days will go by. The days will go by and they'll add up to months and months and months. And before you know it, a year has gone by, two years have gone by. And what have you done for the Lord? How much have you preached? How many people have you testified of Jesus? That's the title of our Sunday prayer letter. Testify unto every man. So uh, that's the news. That's kind of kind of a snapshot of what I'm going to talk about. So let's pray. So Lord, I just thank you for allowing me to come out here and allowing the people to come to the video and to watch uh, as I uh, preach this message on testifying unto every man. I thank you, Lord, that you've given me this verse in Revelation 22, 18 and 19. I praise you, Lord, that you've allowed me to write a Sunday prayer letter, uh, to do a live stream and to do a podcast and to update, what, I mean, to do all the things that you're having me do. It's by your grace, Lord, it's nothing that I'm doing and I just surrender myself to you. As I've been saying all morning long, Lord, I, I'm pouring my life out into the ministry. I'm pouring my life out because this I'm at the end of my life. Lord, and you know that, and I know that, and uh, those who don't know it, I'm letting people know that I'm pouring my life out. And as I was just getting ready to step out the door, Lord, I, it's like you said to me, uh, uh, you'll empty yourself out, and that last filling will be me telling you to come on up here. So Lord, uh, I'm looking forward to that day, but allow me to preach the gospel till that day. If you wanna give me more days, I will receive more days. And I thank you for providing strength in all the ministers' bodies, all the ministers who are preaching who may be laid up in bed or sick or have come against uh, some kind of problem in their body uh, or in their mind or their emotions, uh, whatever it may be, Lord, heal them, Lord, heal them. Heal them now. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that devil that's plaguing you, I cast that devil out. Get out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I pray the blood of Jesus Christ over every person who heard those words. In your name, Jesus, we pray, and we dedicate all this to you, Lord. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let's close chapter one, and we'll reopen with chapter two. So God bless chapter two. God bless chapter two. We know what chapter two is. It's the main, the sub, the letter title, lesson one, the scripture. 
And referring to the scripture, uh, we have scriptures for each day of the week that we preach from. We don't preach from the Sunday prayer letter. We preach using the scriptures out of the Bible that are in the Sunday prayer letter. But the Sunday prayer letter highlights the scriptures that we're gonna use. In other words, it's kinda of like a outline summary uh, for a sermon or messages, whatever you wanna call it, uh, for the week. So it's kind of like uh, my footnotes or my cliff notes uh, for the week of preaching. And for anybody who wants to use it, they're for everyone, not just for me, uh, not for our church, it's for everyone who wants to use it. I still think it'd be a great idea, you know, that on Sunday, wherever you may be in the world, you say, well, where's John preaching on? And so you go to the Sunday prayer letter, you subscribe to the letter, and uh, maybe you have to watch the live stream to kind of get the idea of the letter. Uh, and then you just find the scripture for Sunday, and you use that verse to go preach the gospel today. Now, today's Sunday, you're not gonna see this today, but when you do watch this video, which will probably be Monday or Tuesday, <laughs> um, I'm gonna upload uh, Longmont's video tonight. It's a real long, hour-long video. God bless you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, or Monday or Tuesday. So whenever you're watching this someday during the week, that day of that week, let's say you're watching this on a Wednesday. So you go to the Sunday prayer letter on Wednesday and see what verse we're preaching on. And how you do, do that is you read the verse, you know, you quote the verse, and then you quote the title, or you quote the title testifying to every man. You quote the verse that we're taking that seed out of. And when you uh, declare that, testify that scripture, then you allow the Holy Ghost to lead you wherever it is that the Holy Ghost wants you to preach. Because there are people, there are different people here in Boulder than there are in Texas and in Wyoming and Washington and everywhere else. There's different people everywhere or in some country, other country other than America, United States. So, uh, uh, but the scriptures are the same for everybody. That is if you're preaching out of the same gospel. If you're preaching out of another gospel, another book, uh, well, then it would be different. But if you preach out of the King James, every verse is going to be the same. I don't care what they people say about 1611 versus 1769 versus some other. Look, they all say the same. I've looked at it for, I've looked at hundreds of verses, and they all say the same. <laughs> it's just, anyways, that's another story for another day. So anyways, uh, uh, yeah, you know. It's just an idea, okay? So in this chapter, our main title is uh, The Word of God. It's found in Revelation 19.13. Revelation 19.13, and it says here in the King James, and he was clothed with a vesture. Do you know who that is? If you know who it is, are you serving? If you don't know who it is, are you repenting and coming to Jesus? I mean, it's a serious matter. Yeah, you, you, if you take your salvation lightly and think, oh, I'm going to do it at some other day, it's not going to work. Because today is the day for your salvation, man. So receive Christ today. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called... What's his name called? Yeah. God bless you, man. So what's his name called? Well, some people tell me all kinds of goofy names. I mean, names that I, don't, I can't even pronounce. But it says here, it says his name is called the Word of God. The Word of God. The Word of God. So now you know. So call upon the Word of God. Amen? So under our main titles, our subtitle, and that's Breakthrough and Overcome. Uh, we are in Breakthrough, the idea with my beard. I'm not growing a beard for cosmetic look uh, or because I, I'm tired of shaving. I, this beard is, uh, is, is just very difficult for me, uh, but I am fasting my shaving. I know that sounds pretty weird to a lot of people, but uh, you know, if you already fast most of your meals, you fast your vacations, you fast your time, you fast your life, you fast everything in your whole life. What do you what is left? You know? Well, for me, because I live a fasted life, uh, I it's my shaving. 
because I have I like to be clean shaven. So I'm fasting my shaving because I'm I'm telling God, Lord, I need breakthrough. I'm serious. So I'm fasting and praying, and I pray daily for breakthrough and overcome. That's the idea with our uh, sermons, our messages, and everything we're doing. And we're using this verse here in Numbers 13:30, and Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. So if you received Christ a few moments ago, you now are well able to overcome it. But if you did not receive Christ, you are not well able to overcome anything in this life. You may think you're great, you might be young, you may be healthy, you might be active, you might be rich, or you might be poor, or somewhere in between. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you're not born again, your name not, is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life in heaven, when you get to heaven, because it's appointed to every man to die once, and then comes the judgment, you're gonna get that judgment, and you're gonna find that your name is not written in the Book of Life. And it's very clear in the scripture that every name is not found written in the Book of Life will be cast into lake of fire, fire and brimstone for all eternity. No way out. Once you die, that's it. There's no way out. You can't come back from your death and say, hey, Jesus, I need to start all this over again. I blew it. Now I see the difference. Sorry, you got to do it by faith. By faith. You come to Jesus by faith. And you call on Jesus. When you call on Jesus, you believe in Jesus. If you read uh, Romans 10, 13, and then you take the next verse that says, how can they call unless they believe? Jesus talked about believing a lot. If you don't believe it, you can say Jesus all you want, but if you don't believe it, it means nothing. It's just another name. Just another name. If you don't believe it. But I'm praying for a breakthrough and overcoming. We are going to have breakthrough and overcoming. Um, we're going to overcome the obstacle that's in front of us. And the obstacle that's in front of us is lack of growth. I don't have lack of hours. I don't have lack of harvesting. I don't have lack of sowing seeds. But I'm having lack or a uh, restraint or a pushback or whatever is going on uh, for growth. This ministry should be very, I mean, after 2,600 hours of preaching the gospel, almost three years, come May, it'll be three years of steady preaching the gospel to be still a small little, a little tiny one-man band, maybe two or three here and there. Uh, uh, there's something going on that's outside of me. You know, a lot of people are getting deceived and a lot of people are going back into the world. And uh, that shouldn't be that way. Uh, you, you know, the world is there. We have to occupy. We have to do our careers, our businesses, our schooling, and all the stuff about living. But you need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And sometimes you got to come out of that house and you got to come out to the street and you got to stand by the banner or you got to get dressed up and go pass out tracks. You've got to do something for Jesus, okay? Now, let's say, for example, you're not doing anything for Jesus. And let's say you're physically unable. You, if you're still alive, there's something that you can do for Jesus. There's something that you can do. I don't care if you're, long as you can function somehow, somehow function, you're not dead. There's something that you can do for Jesus. Just ask Jesus, what can I do for you? I don't care if you're paralyzed from the neck down. Or the, you know, the neck up. I know some people who are preaching Jesus and they can't, they're, from the neck down, they're paralyzed. But they're loving on God, they're loving Jesus. And they're doing a lot of work for the kingdom of God. Amen? But let's say, uh, so there's preaching. And then another thing is by giving to people who are preaching the gospel. That's another form of being active in the ministry by supporting with your finances, with your time, with your prayers. Uh, uh, let me take this, uh, you know, your uh, prayers are spiritual, uh, supply and financing and resources, they're more material. And so when you sow material things, uh, that's really what we need here in life. Uh, we need Jesus, yes, but we also need some material possessions. Uh, we need, uh, need to pay the bills, you know? <laughs> you don't pay the bills, uh, you know? 
things go wrong. So uh, uh, help a preacher by helping pay his bills. If he's preaching, if he's not preaching, then don't pay his bills. You know, go find another preacher who is who is preaching the gospel as much as possible and a real good clip of preaching, and then help pay his bills. Find out, find out. Like one guy came to me, praise God, he says, "I want to pay one of your bills. What bill could I pay?" I said, "Well, I'd love to have somebody pay my cell phone bill." So he said, "That's what I'm going to do." So he picked up the cell phone bill and started paying that. Hallelujah. And then God answered his prayer. And God answered his prayer probably a year later or less. I can't remember now. Probably a year, a few, I don't know, something like that. I'd have to look it up. Maybe t two years. And his prayer was uh, he wanted to come home early. He wanted to come to heaven early because he was severely suffering from Parkinson's disease. And he already knew that Jesus wasn't going to heal him, that Jesus was going to bring him home, but he had a work to do before he came home. And uh, so Jesus answered his prayer much earlier than he thought he was going to be answered, but it was perfect. So, uh, amen. Okay, so uh, then our letter, the letter title is uh, Testify to Every Man. Testify to Every Man's Revelation 22, 18 and 19. I'll read that and then we'll talk about that in the next chapter. So Revelation 22, verse 18 and 19. And the title of our letter again is, I tes testify unto every man. So here it is in 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book, in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. We just thank you, Lord, that you've given us your word. And I thank you, Holy Ghost, for teaching us the word of truth in Jesus' name. All right, so let's close chapter 2, and we'll uh, reopen with chapter 3. So uh, God bless chapter 3. God bless chapter 3. Chapter 3, we know, is the breakthrough overcoming lesson 2, the understanding or the teaching or the message on the verse. The title is Testify Unto Every Man. And when you testify, let's say you're going to go to court, and you're going to testify in court to the judge. When you testify, you're supposed to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. You know, sometimes, you know, it used to be, I don't know if you still do it, but you put your hand on the Holy Bible and you make a declaration, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God, something like that. And then the lawyers test to see if you really are telling the truth. And if you're not telling the truth, you can be cited, you can be jailed, you can be fined for lying. It's called perjury. It's called lying. And lying comes from one source. It does not come from you. It comes from one source. And I'm all about finding where the source is. Not talking about the event in front of us, but where did that event originate? Where's the originator? of that thing that we're dealing with. For example, a lie. Where's the origination of that lie? All lies come from the father of lies, Satan. You might have heard a lie or made up a lie, but where did you cut it? All that came from Satan. So if you testify and that testimony that you give is a lie, you are a mouthpiece for Satan. You are delivering a false message to the court. And there's no way that you're going to have breakthrough and you're going to overcome if you are lying. So we have to check to see, am I lying to people about the Bible, about the gospel, 
about preaching, about ministry, about prayers, about fasting? Am I telling the truth or am I mixing it with lies? Because if you mixed it with a lie, it becomes a lie because lies don't mix with the truth. If there's a lie within the truth, the lie, it's a lie. <laughs> God bless you. So, a lot of people don't get that, but let's say you say, I love Jesus, and you uh, commit adultery. Uh, does saying, I love Jesus, nullify you committing adultery? No, you committed adultery, you sinned even though you said, I love Jesus. So that nullifies, I love Jesus. If you tell a lie, it nulls the truth. The truth is pure and holy and righteous. My heart, it checked your heart. Uh, on the back of my shirt, it says, it says, the pure in heart shall see God. This guy's gonna take off here. Sorry. I wish I was a cop sometimes. I you know, years ago, I used to think that was so cool. I used to have straight pipes on my, I used to ride choppers, so I'd have straight pipes and I'd make sure everybody knew I was riding. You know, now, it's to me, it's the most horrible thing. It scares children. It scares people when they drove by, and uh, they think nothing of it. They think it's cool, even though they're disturbing people's peace. Oh well. Anyways, that's something else. I'm outside, so you know I key off the of things that are outside here. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, right? Praise the Lord. Is this thing still in focus? It looks that way. Breakthrough and overcoming. Okay. That's tell the truth. Okay. And so, I uh, and the reason I kind of wrote this letter is because I spent many, many hours uh, uh, going into a subject that I've already studied and already know the truth of. But sometimes, uh, because of what I talk, how I talk and the way I deliver and the way I bring things up, um, uh, not everyone agrees with me. And I don't care, you don't need to agree with me, you need to agree with Jesus Christ. He's the one that died for you. John didn't die for you. Preacher John didn't die for you. And uh, Jesus did. So believe Jesus. Don't believe me. Take it to the scriptures. So I looked and looked and looked, and I went through lots of different material, and I came up with a conclusion that I did not lie. I did not deceive. I did not tell an untruth. I did not testify of a lie. I testified of a truth. But some people can't receive the truth. They don't understand the truth because they're mixed with perversion. They're mixed with corruption. They're mixed with confusion in the Bible and with their relationship with God. There's a lot of believers who are confused. And if you don't believe that, you ought to come out and preach for a while and you'll find out that there's a lot of people who believe in Jesus are totally confused. And what God is gonna do with that confusion is beyond, I, I don't know. Uh, the author of confusion is Satan, but uh, they say they love Jesus, and thank God I don't have to deal with all that. I just preach the gospel and let God deal with the, the, <laughs> the mixed up, the mixed up doctrines that people have. And they'll quote their Bible. They'll quote all kinds of people too, and uh, it's not true. Just because uh, a lie has been told for uh, three days, does that lie become a truth? Uh, if that lie, if you tell a lie, uh, is it, does it sometime in the future become a truth? Well, that's what Satan tries to convince people. Satan tries to convince people that uh, it's okay, you can say that, because eventually it'll become the truth. And people say, oh, okay. That sounds kind of silly, doesn't it? You know, if I keep loving this person that, I, uh, that I'm having sex with, uh, even though I'm not married, uh, and I'm committing sin, uh, eventually it'll all become right. <laughs> People, <laughs> lies don't become truth. So what do you do to change a lie into a truth? You repent. 
You repent. You turn away from the lie. You turn away from your sin and you repent from it. You ask Jesus to wash you with his blood, wash you clean. The remission of sin comes from blood. Life is in the blood. And you stay, you keep your back to the sin in your old life and your lies and you walk the walk of truth. You, you fill your life with truth. And you always be looking around your life. Am I telling the truth here? Am I telling the truth there? And so uh, it's just really important there. So that, I'm talking about breakthrough. If you want breakthrough, if you really want to overcome, if you don't, then just keep, you know, living however you want to live. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. Just have fun. Drink your beer, smoke your cigarettes, and smoke your dope, you know, and uh, tattoo your body up, pierce your ears, and color your hair, and uh, wear half, become half naked, walk around and say, oh, I love Jesus in church, you know, with nothing on. I mean, I don't know, if that's what you want, then, then that's the pastor's job to kick you out, or correct you. <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's read this, and uh, let's see, we are in uh, chapter two here. Am I in chapter two? Uh, nope. Yeah, I'm in chapter three. Sorry about that. In chapter three. <laughs> chapter three. So I'm going to read uh, 18 and 19, and we'll talk on it. For I testify unto every man. So we talked about testimonies and testifying. We want to tell the truth. Okay. To every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Um, a lot of some people say, well, he's referring only, solely, completely, directly to Revelation, nothing else. But that invalidates some of the other verses in the book. Because basically the Word of God is a book of prophecy. Prophecy. The book of prophecy. That's what it says here. Here's the words of the book, of the prophecy of this book. <laughs> it's referring to the entire Bible, okay? If any man shall add unto these things, there it is right there, if any man add, so it doesn't say if God adds, it says if man adds. When man adds to the prophecy, it changes the prophecy. It becomes a lie. That prophecy then becomes a lie. We have Old Testament prophets that prophesied uh, and that prophecy was a lie. God's not gonna have that. God is a God of truth. I am the, you know, anyways. God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So if you're telling a lie, that's what's gonna happen. See, that's why you can't have breakthrough because you're gonna have plagues. And one plague that you can look at is, 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 is the doubt that fills your life and it confuses you and divide you. It's a curse. You know, a plague is a curse. So you can look up all the curses in the Bible, you, even the plagues that are in Revelation. Those are all curses. That's the wrath of God. A curse is the wrath of God. You know, a blessing is the blessing of God, the blessing of the Lord. Blessing of the Lord. You know. Okay, uh, they're written in this book. Verse 19, and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy. So now, now, let's say you don't add, but you take away, okay? You take away. So we're talking about this book, the prophecy. Prophecy, this book is a book of prophesy, prophesying, prophesy, for foretell the future. And let's say, for example, uh, we do this, we, uh, which one was the first one you add? So let's say you add to the prophecy. You add to the book. So what book would you say adds to the book? Well, one of the things, one of the books I preached out of years and years and years ago was called the Amplified Bible. The Amplified Bible, and uh, everyone liked it uh, because it was easy to read and it kind of, but what happened was, was man added to the book, added to the book. 
there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds or thousands, I can't remember now, words added to God's Word. You don't see much about the Amplified Bible anymore. It's kind of out of, because God took it out of here. You know, if you're reading the Amplified Bible and you think that's a good one, look at this verse and ask God, did man add to the Amplified Bible? I know people don't like that, but uh, I like it. <laughs> I'm preaching. <laughs> I just know the difference. It's like if you don't, if you've never been behind, been behind bars, you don't know what it feels like to be convicted of a crime and thrown behind bars. You don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like. You know, you can be a minister in jail, but if you've never been in jail, you don't know what it's like. You know, I know what it's like to be on both sides of the bars. You know, if you've never been a drug addict, you don't know what it's like to be a drug addict. I was a drug addict and now I'm clean. I know if you, you know, I know on both, I've been on both sides of the track, okay? I know what it's like to preach out of a corrupt text. And I know what it feels like to preach out of a pure text. There's two different messages and they produce two different fruits. So if you like your Amplified Bible, study it and find out more about it. And do some, you do your own due diligence and just don't take thanks because somebody that you know, that you respect, that's real big in the ministry says that's a good book. There's a lot of preachers that are uh, big name uh, preachers and pastors and evangelists who are declaring certain Bibles are good. They're pure. They're right. They're the best, most accurate uh, in the world. <laughs> so people believe it. And you know, who am I? I'm nobody. You know, I'm just a one-man band street preacher out here, retired trucker. And if you uh, take away from the words of the book, so what book would you say took words away from the book of the prophecy? Uh, well, the first one that comes to my mind, of course, is the one I used for 25 years, and that's the New International Version, the NIV. It takes things away from the book of the words of this prophecy. Take things away. Those are just two examples. Amplify the NIV. I'm using those because those are the books I preached out of. I remember uh, <clears throat> here about 10 years ago, something like that. It was before I started reading the King James. <clears throat> I was in the truck and I was heading into Portland to make a delivery and then on into Seattle for the rest of my load. And I stopped, uh, I was going to Charlie's Produce in Portland and I was going down the old highway up over Mount Hood. And I stopped at a uh, coffee shop to have breakfast because I was early for my appointment. And I thought, okay, I got a couple hours here and I'll, I'll have, uh, have breakfast. So I took my Bible in there and you know, I'm witnessing to everybody and passing tracks out. <laughs> Anyways, had my Bible on the coffee uh, the table there with my coffee and ordered my breakfast. And I remember so clearly, I looked out the window and I saw my rig across the street, across the highway there, and because I, I walked across and got in the restaurant there. And I remember praying so clearly. I said, Lord, I don't get it. I've been reading this Bible for decades and I can't seem to have any more faith than what I had 20 years ago. I'm preaching out of it, I'm ministering out of it, I'm studying it, I'm doing everything I think is correct. But why isn't my faith growing? Why isn't things happening in the ministry? How come I'm not preaching more? How come you're not using me more? I was so frustrated. And I remember praying that so clearly. And it was about two years later when God put me in the King James, maybe, now I'm just guessing on the times, I don't know the exact times, but it's something like two years later. Could have been three or four, could have been five, I don't know. But it was a, a little bit of a time after that prayer that the Lord started questioning me, not about my preaching, not about my sermons, not about my study, not about anything that I was doing in the ministry. What he started questioning me on was the Bible that I was studying and reading 
and teaching and preaching out of. And I'm going, whoa, this is new. I've never been talked to by God about the Bible. I thought all Bibles were the same. I thought everything, they're all the same. They're all the Bible. It's just a, a preference. If you like to read this, you read that. If you like to read that, you read that. I read the Living Bible every year. I liked the Living Bible, you know, decades ago. That's probably been 25, 30 years I read the Living Bible. They don't even print it anymore. I thought they were all the same. I thought, what's the difference between the Living Bible and the, the New International Version? I didn't see a difference. But the Lord questioned me for months and months and months, and maybe a year, maybe something like that, some period of time, uh, I started doing my own personal due diligence on Bibles. I didn't know there was a Bible version problem. I had no clue. I thought everything was right. I thought God was uh, watching over his word and he was preserving his word. I thought it was everything was fine. I didn't know that words were being taken out of the Bible. I didn't know words were being added to the Bible. I didn't know people were saying, we don't have a Bible anywhere. No one really knows the real Bible, the real word of God. It's all gone now. Uh, these are all copies by copy. I mean, I didn't know any of that. That was all brand news to me, brand new news to me. This is uh, like about eight, nine years ago, 10 years ago. And after a long time of doing research, uh, the Lord showed me the King James Bible. And I have never read the King James Bible to, up to this point. I didn't like it because I thought it was legalistic. I thought it was just a legal document that had no bearing on me. I didn't like it because it's too legalist. That's why, I, you know, I'm a free agent, I thought, you know. <laughs> I'm free, you know, I, you know, I was, came out of the 60s Jesus movement in the 60s, Jesus freaks. I had my long hair, you know, and I, you know, loving on Jesus. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't know a lot about that stuff, but I was, you know. So anyways, uh, uh, when I got into the King James and I stopped preaching out of the NIV, I can draw a line and I can tell you precisely, I mean, I don't know the time, but precisely in my faith, when God answered my faith back in that restaurant, when I parked the truck and walked across the street and had breakfast and had that prayer, that prayer was answered when he brought the King James Bible into my life. And for the last eight years, my faith has not waned at all. My faith has been growing and growing and growing and growing and growing and growing, and it's not stopped. Come over here, Al. I'm gonna donate and I'm gonna give this guy a couple tracks here because he comes every day and I still got a little bit more to do in my video. I still got a little more to do in my video, but here you go. Thank you very right. much. I want to bless you. Thank you so much. You bet, sir. I, I got here about 10, 15 minutes late, so. Kind of dragging. <laughs> yep. Be here next Sunday. You bet. God bless you, Al. I would bring Al on the camera, but uh, we're praying for his salvation. Uh, I, I really believe that he's getting uh, uh, convicted by the Spirit of God to receive Christ uh, every day. Uh, in the last several, I actually started changing at his surgery. He had, uh, I think last October, November, somewhere in there, Al's life began to change when he was in surgery. He had complications, and it took many, many more weeks to recover than normal. And it, it shook him up. He's 73, 74 years old, 73, I think. Shook him up. He doesn't believe there's a God. Now he's questioning. Now he doesn't say that anymore. So, well, maybe there is a God. Maybe God does love me. Maybe God does care. <laughs> it's really great, man. I mean, but sometimes some people are really, you know. Uh, so anyway, so my faith began to grow. It has not stopped since that day. So if you want more faith, and you're already in the King James, maybe there's something else going on. Maybe you need to increase your prayer life. Maybe it's something else. Now, this isn't some, uh, anyways, I don't want to go there. But, uh, and if you're in the King James, or if you're in some other Bible and you're wondering about your faith, you know, do what I did. Research the world of Bibles and find out what's going on in the world of translations. 
Hey, Amen. I know it's long. Uh, I preach a long sermon, sorry, but uh, it's life. So I have chapters. You can jump around. Sometimes you can just watch chapter one and get the idea of what I'm talking about for the whole uh, video. Lesson two. So uh, let me uh, let me finish this up here. But let me finish it by reading 18 and 19 again. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Okay, here's the testimony. Here's the testifying. Here's the truth. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of, this, of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So what I hear in a distance is John, that doesn't apply to me. It doesn't matter what Bible I'm reading. God's not going to do these things that you just read. Really? <laughs> All right. Well, have fun. Just... I'm not God. The wrath of God is going to pour out. And what is coming down the road? Is that what I'm talking about? The wrath of God. We don't know. Jesus says it's nothing in the whole world that's ever happened to the world. This is not like anything like that. It's worse than that. And he was referring to also the days of Noah. It's going to be worse than that. Worse than that? When the whole world was filled with evil, every man and woman and child was evil, every creature was evil. God had to destroy everything except eight people and a few, people, few animals that he brought on board. You know, every kind, two of every kind on board. It's going to be worse than that. And you think that you can read the Amplified Bible, you can read the Living Bible, and you can read the, Amp uh, the Passion Translation and uh, be filled with that stuff? God's going to turn a deaf ear. God is going to turn a deaf ear. If you're quoting verses that are not true, the Bible says he winked at all that stuff at one time. Now he's not. Now he's not. That's why it says to repent from all that stuff. Turn away from it. Anyways, I know that's, I harp on this topic a lot, but uh, uh, the idea is I want people to go preach the gospel, but I don't want people to preach a corrupt gospel, a, another gospel, because that other gospel is about the gospel of the Antichrist. And you're sowing seeds of doubt. You're sowing seeds of lying. You're sowing seeds that you're going to also reap because God is not going to be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. That's why preachers today have to look at what they're preaching to make sure it's true. That's why I did my due diligence to make sure. And yes, I am preaching the truth. I didn't say anything wrong. I didn't say anything wrong. I said the truth. If you don't want to believe it, it's not my problem. That's why Jesus said, if you have ears to hear, let them hear. If they don't hear, it's because they don't have an ear. Jesus said, let this saying uh, go deep into your ears. Huh. That's a pretty cool statement. Uh, deep into your ears. Wow. The only way that'll happen is by meditating in the Word of God day and night. Isaiah, no, uh, Joshua 1, 8, 9. 1, 8. All right, so those are the verses and the title of our letter, uh, Feb 27, Sunday Prayer Letter, says, Testify unto every man, Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19. So let's close chapter 3 and open with chapter 4. Chapter 4. God bless chapter four. Final chapter here. Hallelujah. Then I'll lift my banner. It's going to be a beautiful day today. So recap is to uh, take a look at what you're delivering to people. Take a look at it. Don't preach. Don't minister. Don't even pray out of habit. Look at your prayers. Write your prayers down if you have to. Listen to your prayers. Uh, look at the Bible you're reading. 
Look at the sermons you're listening to. Look at the videos. Look at the uh, church that you go to. Listen, look around. Open your eyes to what's around you. Open your ears to what's going around. And open your heart so you can understand what you're seeing and what you're hearing. If you don't do that, you're gonna. this message goes right over you. You'll just tell John, he's just a, a nutcase. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's, I don't like him. I'm going to unsubscribe. I'm going to never talk to him again. Oh, well. Goodbye. Have a good life. You still here? <laughs> Anyways, let's pray, okay? Lord Jesus, I thank you that uh, you've given me courage to deliver such tough, tough messages. Uh, all too often, Lord, I pray for an easygoing, uh, grace-filled, prosperity-filled message that makes people happy. But all too often, Lord, it doesn't come out that way. It comes out as a stern rebuke or a, or a chastening or some... Uh, uh, heavy message of some sort and uh, Lord I, I don't live that way I live happy I'm always smiling I'm happy I lift the banner I mean every but when I preach Lord you seem to have me deliver these type of messages so I thank you Lord that for the grace that covers me so I can deliver these messages and I thank you Lord for what you're doing here on this video now and I praise you Lord I praise you Lord I praise you Lord in your name Jesus I pray amen and amen. All right, man. God bless you. Have a great day in Jesus.